Welcome to St. John's on this Good Friday in the year 2020. Very unusual circumstances with the coronavirus pandemic uh, running rampant through the country. Today, as we have all this week, we are doing the tritium of the Holy Week without parishioners, and we're doing it via television. My name is Eric Sana, and I'll serve as your elector this morning along with uh, Paul St. Jean, who will also be a proclaimer of today's work. Our father, our pastor, Father Richard Cann, will be the primary person, obviously, and put this on television and Facebook and YouTube required an enormous effort technically. With that, I want to uh, begin today's celebration. Thank you. O Lord, with your eternal protection, sanctify your servants, for whom Christ, your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance that his appearance beyond that of the sons of man, so shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless, for those who have not been told shall see, those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately being to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hide their faces spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured, while we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced, pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord held upon him the guilt of us all. Through him he was harshly treated. He submitted and opened not his mouth, like a lamb led to slaughter or a sheep before the shears. He was silent and opened not his mouth. Appraised, oppressed, and condemned, he was taken away, and who would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sins of his people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evildoers, though he had done no wrong, nor spoken any falsehoods. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If 
given, if given, his life as an offering for this, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through the suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their sins he shall hear. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the grave, and he shall divide, and divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrounded himself to death and was counted among the wicked, and he shall take away the sins of many, and win pardon for their offenders. The word of the Lord.
for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. of the one 
whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it. Immediately the crowd, the cock crowed. Then he brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the Praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the Praetorium in order not to be defiled, so that they could eat the Passover. So Peter came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, We do not have the right to execute anyone. In order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he said, indicating the type of death, he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. My kingdom did belong to the world. My attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged, and the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him repeatedly. Once more, Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you, so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. And Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid, and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him, so Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you, and I have the power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me, but I have been given to you from above. For this reason the one who handed me over to you as the greatest sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, if you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in a place called Stone Pavement, in, he in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon, and he said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. 
Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now, many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but that he said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them in four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be. In order that the passage of Scripture might be fulfilled, that says, They divided my garments among them, for my vestitures they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clovis, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciples there, whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After that, aware of everything, was now fulfilled, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put it, put a sponge, soaked it in the wine, on, put it on a sprig of hyssop, and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs, but one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage says, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus, bound it with burial cloths along with his places according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Last night, the Last Supper, Lord inaugurates a new Passover, a new Exodus, a new covenant, a new priesthood to serve that new covenant. Today, our great high priest offers himself that is the true Passover lamb on the altar of the cross. What a 
wondrous manner, this blood sacrifice is offered. The passion begins in a garden and it ends in a garden. Now, the passion begins in a garden across the Kidron Valley. And it ends. Now, in the place where he was, where he was crucified, there was a garden, and the garden, a new tomb. Sinful Adam would fall in a garden to a tree. And now the new Adam would redeem a fallen humanity in a garden to the wood of the tree. You also know, the Lord turns to the only one in sacred scripture who was present at his birth and is present at his death. The only one who was full of grace, his mother. He says, behold your son. The son, the beloved disciple, uh, St. John really is an icon for every disciple whom Jesus loves. And from the cross we are given, uh, we are given to the maternity of our lady, the motherhood of Mary, belongs to all believers. Our Lord was pierced with a lance and from his side flowed blood and water, a symbolic of, uh, symbolic of our new life and baptism, of our spiritual nourishment in the Holy Eucharist. Reminded also was from the side of Adam in, in paradise in, in Genesis that Eve was formed. And now uh, from the side of the new Adam, the new Eve is formed, the church. Eve was mother of all, all the living. Uh, the new Eve is the mother of all the redeemed. And on the cross, in death, Christ calls out, calls to all of us, he calls us from darkness to light, uh, from death to glory. Church. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her, and to unite her throughout the world, and grant that, leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God, the Father Almighty. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and ever living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy, that your church, spread throughout the world, may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our most holy Father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him, from the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed with the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, put the favor upon our prayers and your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people governed by you, their master, may grow in merit by reason of their faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our Bishop Sean, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed, hear a, a humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace, all may serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord. Amen. For catechumens, let us also pray for our catechumens, that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy 
that having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and ever living God, make your church ever fruitful with new offspring. Increase the faith and understanding of catechumens and reborn in the font of baptism. You may be added to the number of your adopted children through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the unity of Christians, let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what has been gathered, look kindly upon the flock of your Son, and those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith united in the bond of charity through Christ our Lord. For the Jewish people, let us also, let us pray also for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness of his covenant. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and ever-living God, who bestowed your promises upon Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church and the people who first made their own may attain the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For those who do not believe in Christ, let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Let us kneel, let us stand. Almighty and ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ, that by walking before you with a sincere heart, may find the truth that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love, and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those who do not believe in God, let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right in sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and ever-living God, who created all people, to seek you always, but desiring you, by finding you, come to rest, then we pray. Despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you. And so in gladness confess you, the one true God and Father of our human race, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For those in public office, let us pray also for those in public office that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will for the true peace and freedom of all. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart, the rights of peoples, with favor we pray on those who govern with authority over us, throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, and freedom of religion may through your gift be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those in tribulation, let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, Loose in fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Let us kneel. Let us stand. 
Almighty and ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strengthen all who toil. May the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, and all may rejoice, because in that hour of need, your mercy was at hand through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. From those suffering from the current pandemic, let us pray, dearly beloved, to God, the Father Almighty, that he may extend his hand in mercy to all those affected by the coronavirus pandemic. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and ever-living God, heal those who are ill, comfort those who mourn, give solace to those who are afraid and alone. Protect those who are providing medical care, make us instruments of your peace. Among our brothers and sisters, in your mercy, alleviate our fears and eliminate this scourge, that we may come together again to give you praise and to build your kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us adore. Save his command and form by divine teaching, we dare say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And may we are not into temptation, but deliver us from your evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, may it always be free from sin and safe from all distress. With the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve us in the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery, we have a life unceasingly devoted to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please bow your heads for the blessing. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people, who have honored the death of your Son, and the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.